Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do some parameter estimation with Python. So let me jump into a CoLab document that I already have open here. And the idea is this. The idea is that you're going to have some data that um, is noisy in some sense. And there's an underlying function that you can maybe guess. And then after you've guessed that underlying function, there are some parameters in that function that you're going to use to actually fit the data as well as possible. So the steps are as follows. We're going to get the data into Python, which takes a little bit of work if you're using Google CoLab, which I am. Plot the data. Then we will make an educated guess about the function, plot it, look at some reasonable parameters, build a function that minimizes the error. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we're going to use uh, SciPy Optimize to actually do that minimization for us. So very first thing, we need to get the data into Python. Now, I'm not going to run this particular part live for you because it gives a, an authorization code um, that allows Google Colab to talk to my Google Drive. And I obviously don't want to have that authorization code just recorded for everybody to see. So I've already run it. I ran this line of code from google.colab import drive, drive.mount. Mount means I'm going to take this drive and actually put it on top of Google Colab content drive. Okay, and what it does is it generates a link for you right in here. You'll click on that link. It'll take you to a new website. You say, hey, allow this to have access to my Google Drive. It'll give you an authorization code. You paste it in and press go. And then what I need to do is I need to change the directory in my Google Drive to where I want it to look. So my data is in this kind of long directory, my drive, MA334, labs, blah, 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 blah. Right? So um, percent CD is change directory. I changed my directory to this, and then I looked at my present working directory, and that's where I am. So everything seems to be working. You don't actually need to do this. Now, you don't actually need to do either, but if you want to um, put it to a certain directory in your computer, you got to tell it where to go, and that's fine. Okay, so let's actually get the data. I'm going to need to import a bunch of packages. So I'm going to need NumPy. I'm going to need Plotly to do some graphs. All right, I'm going to need pandas will I actually need pandas? Yes, I will need pandas. Um, a, that's a data science library. Um, and I'm going to need scipy. So from scipy.optimize, I'm going to import minimize. Now, that one we're not going to use for a little while, but I think that's all the libraries that we need. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my data is, um, I'm going to call this a NumPy array. And then from pandas, I'm going to read underscore CSV. And the name of my file was noisydata.csv. OK, so I'm going to run that, make sure it works. And then I'm just going to look at what the data is. OK, so the data was. Uh, a list of x values and a list of y values um, and whatever. We can't really tell just by looking at the list. But let's make sure you understand this. pd.readcsv goes to the pandas library and reads the CSV file. And the CSV file's name was noisydata.csv. And that guy was in this directory on my Google Drive. Okay np.array changed it to a numpy array instead of a pandas data frame. I'm going to need that um, a little bit later. But now let's go through and actually plot the guy. So I'm going to do fig, fig equals geo.figure. All right, this is a plotly graphics object. Then I'm going to do geo.scatter. Uh, maybe I'm going to do geo.scatter. There we go. X equals, let's see, that is the first column in my data. Y equals, that is the second column in my data. And then I'm going to do mode equals uh, markers. And after that, fig.show. And let's see what it looks like. Uh oh, I got an error. Oh, it's markers, not marker. Oops, I made a typo. Okay, there we go. 
So here's my data, but before we get too deep into that, let's make sure that you understand the Plotly uh, syntax here. This starts a figure. Inside that figure, it's going to be filled with a scatter plot. My X and Y data are coming from the zeroth and the first column from the data, and mode equals markers. If I did mode equals lines, it connects those, which doesn't make sense. This is discrete data. If I left that off of there, so I'm just going to do a control X to cut that. If I left it off of there, it does lines automatically. All right, control Z, and let's put this back to markers. Okay, so this is the data that I want to fit. So let's see here. Up at the very top, I've, I have the data in, I've plotted the data. Now I want to make an educated guess as to what sort of function models this data. Then I want to plot that guess on top. So coming down here, well, let's see, it looks like this data is coming up and coming to a horizontal asymptote. And if it's coming to a horizontal asymptote, it can't be something like square root or logarithmic because those grow forever. So I'm going to guess that this is like an exponential function kind of flipped upside down. All right, so in here, before I do my fig.show, I'm going to say f is, now it's, it's a, oops, b, d, a, lambda. I misspelled the word lambda. So it's an exponential function. And I've got three parameters that are kind of floating around. So I'm going to say like C0 equals, C1 equals, and C2 equals. And so let's see, I'll say C0 times np.exp of C1 times x plus C2. So I think it's that sort of exponential function. And then what I'm going to do is I'll do fig.add underscore trace. Right, I'm going to have, have a scatter inside. Why it does that, it drives me crazy, but that's OK. All right, my x is going to be my data from column 0. And my y is going to be my f function evaluated at that data. OK, now I can't plot this yet because I don't have estimates for my parameter. So let's just kind of think real carefully about what those estimates might be. Okay, so this is an exponentially decaying function. I've got an asymptote at about 4.5, right? So as this thing decays off to, um, or decays, as x gets really, really large, is what I was meaning to say here, then the exponential function I'm wanting to kind of die off, right? I'm wanting that to maybe go away. So maybe this is about 4 ish and maybe this or maybe I'll call that five and maybe this is like negative two or something like that and I want to decay at something kind of slow let's see what that does okay I made a couple of guesses I don't I don't really care about the names here I can get those in there later well okay my guesses didn't quite work okay so I can fool around with it a little bit more so maybe what if I wanted that a four Okay, brought it down. Maybe that's, maybe I should make this a 4.5. Okay, that brought it down to something a little more reasonable. Well, maybe this 2 didn't seem quite right. Maybe that should have been like a 0.2. Um, oh, maybe we should have gone the other way. Maybe that should be like a 4. No, oh, hey, look at that. Okay, this is actually working pretty well. So let's review. I said I've got, I'm going to have a function that's a three-parameter function, C0, C1, and C2. Those three parameters, I take an absolute guess at them, throw them in, plot them on top of my data, and just see if everything's going to work. OK, so now, what I, now that I have a reasonable guess of my um, parameters, and I have a function that looks like it's going to fit maybe OK, I'm going to build, build a function for the sum of the square, or some of the squares, plural, of the errors. So what I'm thinking here is that I'm going to measure out an error for every single one of these points, right? My error is the difference in the y values here. And there's lots of positive errors. And of course, there are hundreds of them in this particular case, right? There are lots and lots of errors there. I'm going to measure those errors 
I'm going to square them. I'm going to add them up, and I want to just have a function that returns that. So I'm going to define a function. Here it is. Def. I'm going to say it's um, sum of square errors. It's going to accept a list of parameters for me and then output the square errors. So my x will be my data. Oops. So the zero column. My y will be, now I can literally copy this and then I'm just gonna have to do a little bit of work. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it. And now it's not C of zero, it's the zeroth C, the first C, and the second C. Okay, so now I've got my data and I took in a list of parameters called C and then I generated my Y values for the function based on those. So my errors are going to be my Y value minus data at column one. Right, uh, I, I might even call these residuals instead because that's actually what in statistics you would call them. And so what I'm gonna return is the sum I'll do the numpy sum of my, my residuals squared. Okay, so let's just double check that this works. Sum of square errors of, now I sent in, I'm gonna send in a list and that list is gonna be the parameters that I had here. Negative four, negative a half. So negative four, negative 0 0.5 and 4.5. If I run it, it gives me a number. Well, that number is kind of meaningless, but what I really want to do is I want to minimize that number. Okay, so to review, I've built a function that accepts a list of parameters. It builds an X and a Y, and then it builds the residuals, which is the difference between my Y from my function and the data, and then returns the sum of the squares of those residuals. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the scipy minimize function. So I pulled it in as minimize. Now I'm gonna minimize over my sum of square errors function, and I'm gonna give it a list which was the list that I observed visually that seemed to work okay. Okay, now scipy optimize minimize actually just does a minimization routine. And now it says, hey, these seem to be kind of the best gig, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, and oh, by the way, there's a lot you can ignore in this list, but for right now, the end is, hey, we terminated successfully and we have our three parameters. So I'll say my best C, is equal to my best parameters dot x. And then what I'm gonna do, let's see, I'll run that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all of my Plotly code in here. Do, 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 do. Copy, paste. And in these, I'm gonna say, this is my best C of zero. This is my best C of one. And this is my best C of two. And let's see what happens. And voila, look at that. That's absolutely lovely. Okay, I went through a lot of these things really fast because there's a lot of things that have to happen when you're doing parameter estimation. But Python does it so beautifully and so slick. Uh, I would argue that it's maybe one of the best tools. If you've watched the other videos on parameter estimation, Excel, MATLAB, R, I think Python maybe has one of the slickest implementations of so that's a wrap. Have fun. With